Hey guys, it's Miss Casillas here. We are moving into the next part of this unit, which is equations. So far, we've just been dealing with expressions, which do not have equal signs. Now we are going to be looking at equations, and equations do have equal signs. So let's talk about what equations are a little bit more. They are two expressions set equal to each other. And then below, we want to talk about the coefficient constant variable, and then we're going to circle the equal sign. So the coefficient, like we have talked about before, is the number in front of the variable. So 12 would be the coefficient here. The variable is the number or the symbol that we are trying to solve for in an equation. And then a number by itself, we just call that a constant. And then here is the equal sign. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to solve a one-step equation. We will build up to multi-step equations. Today we're just going to do one-step equations. So to solve a one-step equation, the goal is to isolate the variable, such as x right here, with inverse or opposite operations. So if you see something added to x, you will subtract to get x by itself. And then Opposite of that is true as well. If you see something subtracted from x, you will add to get rid of that. And then multiplication and division are inverse operations as well. One inverse operation that can be tricky to remember is what to do when we have a fraction coefficient. Whenever we have something like this, where there is a fraction attached to our variable. If the coefficient is a fraction, what you're going to do is multiply it by the reciprocal to isolate the variable. That's because multiplying by the reciprocal and dividing by the fraction are the same thing. So on this one, the reciprocal would be 2 thirds. And if you look, 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times 2 is 6, so that would be 6 over 6x, which is just 1x, which is what we want. Now x is by itself. And then 9 times 2 thirds would be 18 divided by 3, so 6. So main thing whenever you are solving fractions coefficient, you need to multiply it by the reciprocal, just like we did here. Okay, now let's get into some examples. So you always want to ask yourself, what is happening to x? What is happening to x? And then the second question you want to ask yourself is, how can I undo it? So on this question, I have x divided by 3. So what is happening to x? It's being divided by 3. And remember, the opposite of division is multiplication. So how can I undo it? Well, I can multiply by 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. And I get x equals 27. Okay, we're going to ask those same two questions here. First thing is, what is happening to x? Well, we are subtracting 1.3 from x. And the opposite of subtracting 1.3 from x would be adding 1.3. So I'm going to add 1.3 to both sides. And that zeroes out right here, and I get to bring the x down, which is good. Now x is by itself, and 10.1 plus 1.3 is 11.3. Okay, next one, what is happening to x? I have this 12 in front of it, which means I am multiplying x by 12. And how do I undo that? Well, the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 12. And x is equivalent to negative 3 twelfths. I'm going to use the Desmos calculator to reduce that fraction, negative 3 twelfths is equivalent to negative one-fourth. Okay, I'm going to keep asking myself those two questions, but I'm not going to write it out anymore. Um, I am adding seven and a half to x here. 
So the opposite of adding seven, a, seven and a half is subtracting seven and a half. And I get x equals negative two and one half. Okay, we have a fraction here. So remember when we have a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. And I also have a negative, and the whole purpose is to get x isolated. So I wanna get rid of that negative as well. So I'm going to multiply not only by 7 fourths, but by a negative 7 fourths. Okay, and now x is good, x is by itself since I multiplied by the reciprocal. Now I just need to do negative eight times negative seven divided by four, and I get 14. All right, number six, I am adding a negative eight. Main thing you need to ask yourself is how do I make a zero with the negative eight? I'm wanting the number over here to be zero so that x is by itself. So I'm gonna do the opposite of negative eight, which is add eight to both sides. And I get x equals 20.25. Okay, let's look at number seven. It says write and solve an equation for the model below. So I can see on the left side of the equal sign, I have three X and then these are all negatives and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 of them. So the equation is three X equals negative 12. And to solve that, I would just divide both sides by three, and I get x equals negative four. Okay, now we're gonna move into word problems, and in word problems, it's important that you define the variable, the missing thing, so you know how to write the equation. The variable is always going to be what are we looking for. So it says Alex has $68 and Michael has 28 or 20 more than him. How much money does Michael have? So that is what we are looking for. How much money does Michael have? So I'm going to let my variable be X and that will be amount of money Michael has. Okay, so now I just have to write this equation. I know that Michael has what Alex has and $20 more. So that means that Michael has $88. All right, let's look at number nine. It says Travis bought six boxes of Girl Scout cookies and paid $25.50 in total. How much was each box? So there's the variable, how much was each box. That's what I'm looking for. So I will let X be the cost of each box. Okay, so now I can write my equation. Travis bought six boxes. So it's gonna be six X because X is the box and he bought six of them and he paid $25.50. And now all I have to do is divide by six, and 25.50 divided by six is 425. So each box cost $4.25. Okay, number 10, it says find side length x if the perimeter of the square is 10. So I have four sides on this square. And when I multiply one side by four, that'll give me the perimeter of 10. So now I'm going to divide by four. And 10 divided by four is 2.5, so x is 